I hear people say this all the time. Blogging is dead. It's so 2018. And you know what? If you look at blogging as the way that many people did it back in 2018, then you know what? <laughs> I guess it is. Because no one really wants to go find, uh, to spend a lot of time and effort and certainly to go to a blog to read somebody's inane posts about how they're feeling today, about how depressed they were because such and such a team last lost last night or the cute thing their three-year-old did or what they had for dinner or whatever. Basically, what's ended up happening is that traditional stuff that we used to call blogging, that's all moved to social because what's ended up happening is that the real blogging, the publishing of articles, that's still not only lives, but it absolutely thrives. And this is what you should be doing if you want to be building a business. Basically, what's ended up happening is that low real value stuff, it all moved to Instagram and Twitter and Facebook. The, the stuff that nobody really cares about, the only, the only reason they're there is because they want to keep track of their friends. They want to go to one place and see all their friends' stuff there. And so they can get inane with a whole bunch of friends all at once. They don't want to click over into somebody's site. They're siloed things and only see the inanities of that one individual. They want to look at everybody's inane inanities all at the same time. Can you see how I feel about some of this stuff? It's like, don't waste my time. All right. But the stuff that's the real high, real value stuff, that needs to get recorded someplace. And usually it's recorded in either written and or visual mechanisms. And oftentimes that needs to be stored someplace. That's where a blog really works. So if you think about a blo your blog is the place where you publish quality, worthwhile stuff to read, that's what your blog is. It's the place where you publish your articles. So if you think about it in terms of publishing rather than blogging, and articles rather than blog posts, it totally changes the way you even look at your blog and it totally changes the results that you get out of it. And then when you take an even bigger view of saying, okay, I'm in the publishing business. And then you look at it from a bigger point of view and you realize that you're really in the media company business. You're in the business of taking information, content, and publishing it to the world. And what ends up happening is what format that publishing comes out as becomes almost inconsequential. What ends up happening is you choose the format that's best for the piece of information that you're communicating at this particular moment. And that also dictates where it is housed. Now, it's going to get promoted to a number of different places, but where it actually lives, that depends on this individual piece of content. And may I recommend that the place to house your articles is your blog. And by the way, the place to back up your videos, so your videos should be housed on YouTube and also published to your blog. What you're trying to do is you're trying to make it so your blog becomes literally the center of your empire. So everything you do, no matter where it is, no matter whether it's on YouTube or Facebook or Twitter or Instagram, all of them eventually point into your blog. Now, I realize that Instagram and TikTok and and many of these places are making it more and more difficult. They want to keep a silo garden. They want to keep you just on Instagram. They don't want to let you go off to those other places because that's how they get to pay for advertising. I totally understand that. But you still should 
be saying, okay, I understand you have these rules where you want people to live on your garden. I want them to live in mine. And so I'm going to figure out whatever I can to move them from your garden into mine because mine is where I can actually make some money. Because everything points at your blog, then your blog becomes that centerpiece where you make things happen. And as you think about this, remember also who really owns your social media account. Just ask Donald Trump. Who, if you look at it, he made a lot of mistakes. But one of the key mistakes he made was that all his content lived on somebody else's piece of property, not his own. What if he would have set up a blog and simply use those other things to point people into his blog? Could the world have been a different place for him now? All right. Now, you need to recognize that your blog is where business happens. So your social media is where inanities happen and where you promote the things, the business things that are happening on your blog. But your blog is where the real business happens. The business like signing people up for emails. That really lives on your blog. It's where products actually get sold. That really lives on your blog. But your blog actually is not enough. You need to recognize that once you get into this business of being a media empire of publishing and publishing becomes media in agnostic, you're going to publish in whatever media property makes the most sense. Then you really need to add to the written work that might happen when you publish an article to your blog. You need to add video. That video needs to live on someplace like a YouTube, but it also needs to get replicated onto your own blog so that people can come into your walled garden and access your stuff all in one place, get to know you, get to love you, get to trust you all in one location as opposed to having to go off to 52 different places to find you and to figure out the essence of you. In addition to written lives on your blog, video you also need to have audio with podcasts. You need to have live streaming that's going to live on a number of different prop properties. And you need to have social community happening where that happens best because social community does not happen well on a blog. It doesn't happen well on YouTube. Where does it happen? It happens on the social media properties that are designed specifically to get people chatting about certain subjects. That's where you want to be. So that's going to be Instagram. It's going to be Clubhouse. It's going to be Facebook. It's going to be the places where people go to congregate and be a community, where they go to talk with each other as opposed to at each other and realize that when I say talk at each other, you immediately hear, oh, that's negative. Actually, it's not. When you publish a great piece of content, you're talking at someone. You then can have a conversation about that thing that you talked at them. You can talk with them about that in a piece of social media property and in the comments on your blog, yes, but that's not the primary place where conversation about that is going to happen. One of the things I've learned is that Twitter has shifted from it used to be like a bullhorn where a bunch of people threw out a bunch of content to a place where people talk about the key things that are happening. So you talk at them on your media properties that publish con that publish written, visual, and audio content. You talk out with them about that in the places that are designed for social community. That's why it's important to have a presence in those different places. You also need to have an aspect of interactive broadcasting that happens in this, in this thing. Think Zoom, an interactive webinar, those kinds of things where people are able to come and see you present to them visually and then interact with them. 
So the thing that I just talked about can be very overwhelming because what I just said is you need to have an empire that does everything. Well, trust me, that's not what I'm saying. What I'm saying is you need to figure out a system that works for you and for your potential prospects and customers that may or may not include X social media site, Y tactic. Maybe even it may not include certain media that you might be in otherwise. You've got to pace it. You've got to be careful. You can't burn yourself out. You've got to do things in a way that work for you and everyone. But again, recognize your blog is home base. Because one of the things that we are in the business of doing is we're in the business of transforming people's lives. Transforming people's lives usually has as a foundation content. Remember when I talked about low value lives on social media, high value lives on a blog and video, and you could add audio into that. You're in the business of high value. Let other people play the low value game. You play the high value game. Other people might have dozens of cute little things. You have fewer but more powerful content that transforms their minds, their mindsets, their bodies, their businesses, and their lives. You can't do that with inanities. You do that with quality content. That's how I blogs still continue to thrive. When you use this mindset that my blog exists for the purposes of allowing me to communicate my high quality content in my walled garden that I own, and everything else is going to point people to come to that so they can access it. Then you're using a blog the way that it can become incredibly profitable, incredibly game-changing and business building for you. Let me know what you think. I'd love to see your comments. This is Don Crowther saying, just go do this stuff. Mm -hmm.